Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In this session we will delve into an essential aspect of computer networking, the data link layer. Now let's see the today's agenda. First we will focus on data link layer and next the protocols that operate within the data link layer and then we will delve into the various tasks performed by data link layer. Moving ahead the sub layers of data link layer and we will wrap the session by looking after the design issues of data link layer. First what is data link layer? Data link layer serves as a bridge or a translator between the physical layer and network layer. We know that physical layer deals with transmission of raw data bits over the network medium. Whereas network layer handle tasks such as addressing, routing and data formatting. The data link layer is the second layer in OSI model. The data link layer is a traffic controller for data on a network. It ensures that data packets are sent and received correctly between devices on the same network. The data link layer is responsible for taking packets from the network layer and breaking them down into smaller more manageable units called frames. It is like dividing a big parcel into smaller packages for easy handling. The main job of data link layer is to handle addressing, packaging data into manageable chunks and checking for any errors to ensure safe delivery. So the data link layer plays a crucial role in ensuring reliable and efficient communication between devices within the same network. Now let's discuss data link layer protocols. Data link layer protocol encompass various standards and protocols that define how data is transmitted and received across a physical medium. The prominent data link layer protocols are listed here. Ethernet for communication between multiple devices within local network environment, point to point protocol, HDLC and ADCCP for point to point connections are examples of data link protocols. Now let's discuss some significant data link layer protocols. First synchronous data link protocol, SDLC. It is designed for synchronous, co-transparent transmission of data over communication lines. Next, High Level Data Link Control HDLC. It is a set of protocols for communication between network points or nodes, which offers framing, addressing, error detection and flow control. Next, Serial Line Interface Protocol SLIP. It is an internet protocol allowing users to connect to internet via computer modem. And then Point to Point Protocol PPP. It is used to establish connection between two computer systems commonly employed for communication over telephone networks or internet. Moving further, we have Link Control Protocol LCP. It is part of point to point protocol responsible for establishing, configuring, testing, managing and terminating transmission lines including negotiation for option setup and features between endpoints. Next up, Link Access Procedure LAP. Lab protocols are utilized for framing and transferring data over point to point lines at data link layer. And lastly, Network Control Protocol NCP. It is a mechanism within point to point protocol for configuring various network layer protocols for point to point connections which facilitates communication between devices. And these protocols play crucial roles in establishing and maintaining communication links between network devices which ensures reliable data transmission and efficient network operation. Now let's move on and understand the functions of data link layer. The data link layer serves several key functions in network, which includes framing, link access or access control, reliable delivery, flow control, error control, physical addressing, multi-access control, half duplex and full duplex. Now let's discuss them in detail. First framing. Framing is a point to point connection between two devices that consist of a wire in which data is transmitted as a stream of bits. And these bits are structured into identifiable chunks of information known as frames. So framing divides data from the network layer into frames. And each frame containing a header and trailer to mark the beginning and end of the frame which provide error checking. So framing act as a header format for the data. And next function is access control or link access. Access control within the data link layer plays a vital role in managing communication channels shared by multiple devices. It prevents collisions by allowing only authorized devices to transmit data, which ensures smooth and efficient data transmission. Access control in data link layer is typically achieved through various mechanisms depending on the network technology being used. And the common methods are MAC address filtering, carrier sense multiple access, CSMA, collision detection and avoidance, token passing, virtual LANs. These methods regulate access to network channels which makes data transmission efficient and orderly while reducing the chances of collision and unauthorized access. Moving further, we have the function Reliable Delivery. Reliable Delivery ensures that frames are transmitted and received accurately and reliably. This may involve error detection and retransmission mechanisms to recover from transmission errors. So the data link layer usually provides reliable delivery over links because it can fix errors locally. 
which reduce the need for data to be recent. Followed by that, we have flow control. During data transmission, the data flow of the sender or the receiver may not be similar. So it will cause network jam in the channel. The data link layer in such situations act as a flow control. It regulates the flow of data between the sender and receiver to prevent data loss or overflow of buffers. The flow control mechanisms ensure that a fast sender does not overwhelm a slow receiver. The flow control mechanisms like stop and wait, sliding window, buffering, window size adjustment, explicit flow control will work together to regulate the flow of data between the sender and receiver. Thereby it prevents congestion and ensuring smooth communication across the network. Moving further, we have error control. During data transmission, due to noise or signal loss, error might occur. To minimize such data error rate, the data link layer performs error detection and correction techniques on the transmitted data. Error detection techniques like CRC, checksums, error correction techniques like forward error correction, and automatic repeat request enable the data link layer to provide essential service such as reliable and efficient data transmission. Now let's pass and ask a critical question. If a data link layer can detect errors between hops, then why do we need another checking mechanism at the transport layer? Before discussing this topic, let's understand what is hops are. Hops refer to the movement of data from one network node to another. Each time data moves from one node to next and it is considered as a hop. So we can think of hops as a stages or points along the route where the data travels from one node to another in a network. The data link layer checks for errors within each individual link or hop using the technique called CRC, which is cyclic redundancy check. A network consists of multiple hops where data passes through different nodes or devices. So errors can occur beyond a single hop due to the factors like congestion or transmission issues. And this is where the transport layer steps in. The data link layer ensures error detection within hops, whereas the transport layer through protocols like TCP focuses on end-to-end -end reliability. It focuses on entire communication path which encompasses multiple hops and network segments. By implementing additional error checking mechanisms at transport layer such as checksums, sequence numbers, acknowledgements and retransmissions, TCP makes sure data is arrived at its destination accurately and reliably, no matter how complicated the network is. And thus the transport layer's error handling is more comprehensive and operates at higher level which allows effective error recovery strategies. Next function is physical addressing. Physical addressing is also known as hardware addressing or MAC addressing. It is a fundamental function of data link layer. Physical addressing enables devices to uniquely identify each other on a local network segment. Adding physical address to the frame headers helps in identifying the sender and receiver devices on the network. And this process is called addressing. Physical addresses help in routing frames to the correct destination in a multi-network environment. So it acts as an identification service. The data link layer adds a header containing the physical address to the frames. Hardware address is also known as MAC address, which are unique identifiers assigned to devices during manufacturing. The data link layer provides a layer 2 addressing mechanism for managing and utilizing these hardware addresses for communication within a local network segment. Overall, the physical addressing facilitates communication between devices at data link layer, which ensures data reaches the right destination reliably. And next function is multi-access control. In networks, when many devices share a connection, collisions may occur when devices try to send a data at the same time. To manage this, the data link layer employs mechanisms like carrier sends multiple access with collision detection or token passing. And these techniques allow system to access shared media fairly and effectively. And finally we have half duplex and full duplex. Half duplex and full duplex refers to communication modes in networking. In half duplex, data transmission can occur in both directions but not simultaneously. So here devices can send or receive data but not at the same time. It is like walkie talkie in which one person talks while other listens and then they switch roles. Whereas in full duplex, it allows simultaneous transmission in both directions. It is like telephone conversation where both parties can speak and listen at the same time. This mode enables faster and more efficient communication between devices. The data link layer utilizes the concept of half duplex and full duplex in two key areas which are medium access control and flow control. Now let's understand the sublayers of data link layer. The data link layer is further divided into two sublayers, which are logical link control LLC and media access control MAC. The LLC is the topmost layer of data link layer. LLC provides several functions to support reliable communication. First is flow control. LLC regulates the data flow between the devices so that it can prevent data overflow or underflow. That is it makes sure the data is sent at a speed that both devices can handle. Next, error detection. 
LLC employs error detection techniques such as checksum which verify the accuracy of transmitted data. If error is found, LLC asks for the data to be sent again, which ensures that erroneous data is not propagated throughout the network. Moving further, sequencing. Each data packet transmitted by LLC is assigned a sequence number. This numbering system allows the receiving device to reassemble the data packets in the correct order, which ensures integrity and accuracy of the transmitted data. Next, framing. LLC adds additional information to the data packets such as header and trailer to indicate the start and end of the transmission. Now let's understand the media access control sublayer. It is a crucial component of data link layer which is responsible for governing how devices establish connections and access the network medium. It is situated at the bottom of the data link layer. The MAC sublayer is also referred to as medium access control. The MAC sublayer's main job is to make sure the devices can send data smoothly over the shared network without any problems or slowdowns. It handles multiplexing and flow control for transmission media which ensures efficient data transfer. Its primary responsibilities are encapsulating the frame, checking for transmission errors and forwarding the frame to the upper layer. It regulates access to the media, deciding which devices are allowed to transmit data at the given time. Now let's understand the design issues of data link layer. Design issues are the challenges and considerations that arise when designing protocols and systems at data link layer. These issues encompass aspects like how to provide service to the network layer, how to synchronize frames, how to control the flow of data, and how to handle errors. So the functions describe what the data link layer does, whereas design issues address how those functions are implemented and what consideration need to be taken in account to ensure effective and efficient operation. First, network layer service agreement, that is services provided to the network layer. The data link layer acts as a service interface to the network layer. The primary service is transferring data from network layer on the sending machine to the network layer on the destination machine. And this transfer also takes place via data link layer. It provides three types of services, unacknowledged and connectionless services, acknowledged and connectionless services, acknowledged and connection oriented services. In unacknowledged and connectionless services, frames are sent independently without acknowledgement and no logical connection is established. In acknowledged and connectionless services, each frame is acknowledged by the receiver and the frames are retransmitted if not received within a specific time interval. In acknowledged and connection oriented services, Logical connection is established between the sender and receiver before data transmission. Each frame is numbered for reliable delivery. Next up, frame synchronization. Frames are used to transmit data from the source machine to the destination machine over the network. The data link layer divides the data into frames and computes a checksum for each frame. This checksum is used at destination layer to ensure data integrity. And we know that framing is process of breaking up the continuous stream of bits into discrete frames. And this process involves adding breaks and gaps between the frames to clearly separate them. And marking the beginning and end of each frame accurately can be challenging and risky. So errors in frame synchronization can lead to data corruption or loss. To address these challenges, simple techniques are used in framing, which are character count, starting and ending characters with character filling, starting and ending flags with little fillings. Character count is counting the number of characters in each frame to determine its boundaries. In starting and ending characters with character filling, we use specific characters to mark the start and end of each frame and adding extra characters to fill any remaining space within the frame. In starting and ending flag with little fillings, use special characters or flags at the beginning and end of the each frame with a little bit of extra data added if necessary. Next, flow control. Flow control is essential to halt data transmission at the receiver end. This is because the transmitter may send frames too quickly for the receiver to handle. If the sender operates on lightly loaded system, while the receiver is heavily loaded, the receiver may struggle to process incoming frames as fast as they arrive. Even if the transmission is error-free, the receiver may still be overwhelmed. So the flow control technique includes methods such as sliding window where the receiver signals the sender to stop transmitting data temporarily until it is ready to receive more, thereby preventing the receiver from being overwhelmed. Next, error control. Error control is done to prevent duplication of frames. Positive or negative acknowledgements are sent for incoming frames. Positive acknowledgement means the frames arrived safely. Negative means it needs retransmission and the timers are set to manage retransmissions. Frames are assigned sequence numbers to identify retransmitted frames. And it is an important task in data link layer to ensure reliable communication. And finally, physical address of frames. The data link layer appends a header to the frame that describes the physical address of the sender or receiver. The physical address helps to identify the network interface card of each device, so that it ensures that frames are delivered accurately to the intended destination on the network. And that's all for this session. Thank you so much.